Welcome back, everyone. If you could please like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. So I'm coming to you today from my home office. It has been extremely hot in Chicago this week. It's been in the 90s to over 100 degrees. And normally when I record in the studio, I turn off the air conditioning because it's rather loud. But as you can imagine, it would get really hot there really fast um, this week. So that's why I'm coming to you from my home office, which I haven't recorded in, I think, since last summer. So in today's video, I'm gonna break down this image of my model Dyron back here. I'm gonna go over each light and talk about what it's doing and sort of give you an idea of how you could create an image like this um, at your home or in your studio or wherever it is that you shoot. So we'll start off by talking about the main light. So the main light uh, is modified with a Mola Rayo. This is a silver hard reflector that's about 16 inches or 40 centimeters. And the main purpose of this light is to create a shadow from the hat on Dyron's face from about here uh, down. It's also going to light the rest of the shot. And so um, you want to keep this light so high that you don't see a catch light, which is a reflection of that light in the model's eye when you're looking at the picture. The next light we're going to talk about is the fill light. And the fill light is a Mola Seti, which is a 28 inch or 70 centimeter white beauty dish. And it has a sock over the front of it. Now this light is here to fill in the shadows and get us some light sort of on Dyron's face from about here up. But the main thing that this light is doing is creating a circular catch light in his glasses. I put the sock over there so that when this light was reflected in his glasses, it was completely smooth. I also chose circular glasses for him to wear because I wanted it to mirror the circular shape of the modifiers. I was shooting at f5.6 and I had this fill light turned down so that when I metered it on his face, it metered at f2.8. That's two stops darker than the main light. That was so that I could preserve that shadowing, but of course have enough brightness to get that reflection. Now, most of the time when I was shooting, like in these images, the catch light uh, in his, the pupil of his eye, or I always get this wrong, the iris of his eye? Anyway, the catch light in his eyes and the reflection in the glasses didn't overlap. But in this image of him throwing the cards, uh, I had the best action possible um, in the, the, out of all the shots that I took. And in this particular one, they overlapped. I'm not really thrilled about that, but I like the rest of the image. And so that's why I decided to go uh, with this frame. You'll, got, you'll have to let me know in the comments how you feel about this and, uh, sort of thing. I love seeing the reflection of his hand and the cards in the shot and that really adds to it. And if I tried to Frankenstein on a different head, um, I might have not had um, that glass reflection uh, match up with reality. So that's why I really chose to, to just go with this and not try to composite something. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is the hair light, or in this case, the hat light. So I've got a uh, one by three foot strip softbox back there. It's an Elenchrome 100 by 35 centimeter uh, softbox and it's pointed uh, down from the back at the top of his hat. Normally this would be a hair light. That's why I'm struggling with saying hat instead of hair. Um, the point of this light, and it's also turned down two stops down from the main light, is just to create some separation between Dyron and the background and sort of edges out the hat and gives it some three dimensionality. And that's really the main reason why I would use a hat light or a hair light most of the time. And, and that's to add this sense of, of three dimensions uh, to the end shot. If you get things set up and start shooting some test shots and then find that this hair light, hat light, isn't bright enough, just turn it up to taste. But know that you could end up in a situation with an older lens or a cheap filter where you get a fair amount of haze from a light like this pointed back towards the camera. So just look out for that and make sure that this light is just bright enough to give you the three-dimensional effect that you're looking for but not so bright that it causes another problem. Uh, with the current RF lenses that I have, um, this isn't a problem, but maybe if I was using like a 10 year old, um, 
I remember particularly the 10 year old, well, maybe it's 14 years old, but uh, the Canon EF 85 millimeter 1.2 version two, it would flare in this situation um, a lot. And you wouldn't too much more than I would like. And you wouldn't necessarily notice it unless you compared it against another lens that was newer. And then automatically you would see uh, the difference. But before we move on, I just wanted to say that if you enjoy learning from me in these videos, I'm sure that you would love learning from me in person. And soon I'll be teaching lighting workshops in Chicago, Dallas, Denver, and Orlando. So for more information, just go to johngress.com slash workshops. And another thing to keep in mind when you're shooting motion like this is the flash duration. I made an entire video about flash duration, which I will link to. But in general terms, with most lights, when you turn the power down, the burst speed of your flashes becomes shorter and that burst is what stops the motion. So you want to make sure that you're using a power setting on your lights that will result in a flash duration of about a three thousandth of a second in order to freeze the motion or relatively freeze the motion of uh, the cards flying through the air. So if you watch that video, I go into it in depth, but in general, what you want to do is you probably with most lights just want to adjust the power of that main light until you see an improvement in the results but the manual will tell you whether or not lowest power gives you uh, the quickest flash duration or maximum power gives you uh, the quickest duration. So you just sort of need to know with most of the Ellen Chrome lights, it displays the flash duration in real time on the back of um, the LCD. So um, you just wanna make sure you have that brightness setting set correctly, but that video will go into a lot more depth on flash duration and help you uh, learn how to freeze movement in your shots. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is this piece of cardboard with holes in it um, up here in the front. This is a homemade Kukaloris. You can buy a commercially made one from uh, Matthews, let's say, or something like that. Normally they're made out of wood. But the main point of a Kukaloris is so that you can shine light through it and it will project a pattern of those holes so long as you're using a hard light onto a background or onto your subject and that sort of thing. It's just supposed to create sort of a marbled background. When you use it in this sort of way, which is it's just right there below the main light and just out of the frame, I'm using it to block the transmission of some of the light from the main light from hitting um, the table and maybe diron from about here down. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm just burning, I have to make sure that I've got this right. I always get confused uh, whether it's burning or dodging. I'm trying to darken down the frame from about here uh, down. And that's so that your eyes will be drawn to the model's eyes and you won't be distracted by other elements in the frame. You could do this with a gradient filter in Lightroom or Capture One, but I've always found that doing it in the real world gives you better results and also uh, saves you time in post. So just uh, keep that in mind in general. Anyway, guys, I hope that all made sense and helped. If you have any questions or comments, particularly how you feel about the catch lights in the glasses, just let me know below. And as always, stay safe, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.